Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling and Dash for the 29th of May. The year is 2022. Today we're going to be looking at Proverbs 10, 11, and 12, and also Romans chapter 10. I'm calling this one Be Smart, Love Discipline, but I'll explain in a moment. Dear, would you go ahead and lead us off with prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day that you've given us. Thank you again for the opportunity to read your word and learn more about you. We ask that um, you bless those who are listening, Lord, and help them to grow closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And help us grow too. Today I'm pulling from the scripture Proverbs 12, verse 1, and another one as well. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. <laughs> and then Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, let's all say it together, Jesus, Jesus is Lord, Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let's all say heaven. 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 Because that's what you get. The observation, Proverbs talks about people that hate to be corrected are fools. They're dumb, stupid, I think was the term used. The second scripture deals with a note that we must all choose to be called a believer, Christian, or Christ follower. People must declare it and believe it. Christ died and rose again as a sacrifice for our sins. How does this apply to my life? Well, in general terms, we hear that people who do not want to change, are foolish. I should live by a spirit of excellence and welcome the opportunity to get better. Nobody is perfect besides Jesus. Prayer. Lord, thank you for the mentors in my life. May I have an open heart to growing and improving myself. God, thank you for blessing me with you, Vela, as it says in Proverbs 12, verse 4, a wife of a noble character is her husband's crown. And that's what I've got. Amen, Pastor David. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question. As an adult, how would you be disciplined by God? Um, you know, when you're doing something that's wrong, you kind of got the help from the Holy Spirit saying, that's not the best thing for you. Another way you can do this, especially if you're new to knowing God, is to get some Christ following mentors. I've had different mentors for different parts of my life. So you can search out mentors in different areas. Like you, if you want to know how to cook something, you check with one person. Or as you were getting your PhD, you checked with another person how to do that. So you can get specific area mentors as well. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're so and you ask them to speak in your life. Say, uh, Pastor David, I don't think I'd be doing that. Or, no, you need to go back to the gym, Pastor David. Um, I'm glad yours was short because mine is quite long. Uh, several scriptures, Romans 9, I mean, Romans 10, 9 through 14. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. In other words, everyone's the same. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? My observation. Today, two things spoke to me that go hand in hand. First, anyone who believes in their heart that God raised him from the dead will be saved. For in is with their heart that they believe and are justified, and it is with their mouth that they profess their faith and are saved. This is what scripture says, so anyone can be saved. The second part is personal. How then can they call on the one that 
they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without anyone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? It says at the very end of the book of Matthew, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So who is called? All of us who are Christians are called to preach the word of God. My application. How will I be changed by what I read today? Our personality is formed by our experiences in life. I was raised in a church that would take scripture and twist it to make their own rules. It was based on fear of God's condemnation. It also portrayed evangelism as yelling on the street corners that the wrath of God was coming and everyone needed to be saved. While there is some truth in this, all people should accept the grace of God, the approach is not right. So when I hear that I am to preach the gospel to the world, the image of standing on a street corner comes to my mind. However, having spent time with God through reading his word for over 20 years, I remember what 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts rever revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reasons for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. And I realize I can tell others about God. I believe that through prayer and asking God to open the doors for me, I can find opportunities to tell others about God. I will be changed by not being afraid of evangelism and pray for opportunities for God to open the doors for me to speak to others. My prayer, Lord, you know that my words get all tangled up when I try to talk, and many times I forget where scripture is located in the Bible. I use uh, Google search to find my scriptures. I do that at Bible Gateway. Uh, I have a hard time memorizing things. As you know, I've been studying Japanese for the past 10 years and forget what I learn every day. I just cannot retain what I learn. However, I will keep trying, even though I have been have not been successful thus far. Now, getting back to the main part of this prayer. Your word tells me that I am to tell others about you. So I'm asking that you give me the words to say and the spirit of bravery as I step out in faith. Amen. Amen. I'd like to give some examples for the church you talked about growing up, and I never went there. But... It was a church where you couldn't play cards, mm -hmm. which we play Kings in the Corner and Crazy Eight and stuff like that now. There was no dancing. And I'm thinking about the wedding we're going to go to in another week for our niece. And I'm like, okay. So those are some examples of what that church said was wrong. Well, and then again, you can, they would take scripture and they would pull it out of context or even pulling it out of context and using it without realizing that the culture back there at that time, and they would make it say what they wanted to say to back up what they wanted to believe. Yeah. For example, like you shouldn't wear makeup. Well, you, no one should be a Jezebel. And nowhere in the Bible does it say you women should not wear makeup. But they were taking scripture out to back up what they wanted it to, to say. Yeah. So that's why it's really important to spend time in the Word, to know what it says. And then when you have a question, um, you go to those mentors and say, where in the Bible does it say this? Is this true? And I did that quite a bit as a teenager, and they were not able to give me other scriptures to back it up. And so that's when I began to think, hmm, this isn't quite right. And it's okay if your pastor or your mentor doesn't know the scripture, as long as they can go back and ask somebody yeah. and say, you know, I remember hearing something like this. Um, let me go find it. 
and then they come back to you with the answer because everything should be backed up by scripture. Right, and when all, all you just have to believe this. It's like, well, I will believe it if you tell me we're in the Word. So the Word will support the Word. Right. That's important. And speaking of the Word, tomorrow... We're going to be looking at Proverbs chapters 13, 14, and 15, and also Romans chapter 11. And I'll close this out today for prayer. Father God, thank you so much for these pearls of wisdom that you bestow upon us each and every day. We pray for those that are fighting cancer. Uh, thank you for those of you who are listening and watching that pray for those people, but also we have reports of people having COVID as well. So we pray for um, some health miracles this week, Lord, and we ask that you would step in and just uh, heal these people. Also continue to guide us and protect us. Amen. Amen.